So since we have everyone here, uh, I can call the meeting to order um, the finance committee meeting. We have myself, Amy Biden, Dylan Manns, Valerie Hood, and Alexi Levine, and Paul Benjamin. So that's everyone here tonight. I did, I'm sorry that I, um, I, I talked to everyone and I mentioned the meeting, but then I didn't confirm and I didn't tell you until today when I was uh, sending out your, um, uh, so if you have to scoot or if uh, we'll try to keep it quick. So uh, sorry for not confirming it a little bit earlier than today. <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, uh, tonight we're just going to, uh, this is our first meeting for 2021, well, for the year 2021, for, and we'll be um, letting uh, Carolyn go over, you know, what we have in store, and uh, Linda has some numbers for us, and I think Deb has some information for us as well, so Carolyn, if you want to take that it away. Is, sure, all right, it's that. Uh, it is nice to see everybody. I know I've watched your videos. I did stop you guys for about six months before I got hired. So uh, I feel like I know you guys, but you guys don't know me. So um, it's nice to see everybody. And for those of you who don't know Deb, Deb is our interim HR director. Why Ed O'Connor has been on. Um, he was uh, away for military reasons and he is back. So we have Deborah only for another week or two, which she has been a huge asset to the town, and I want to thank her before I even start um, how great she's been. So, um, and you're going to see it in a few minutes, her presentation. But, so, um, I want to give you a little bit of a six month overview. I'm, I think I've reached the six month mark, and um, I was fortunate to work alongside David, uh, David Nixon. Um, he walked me through many of his financial documents that I know a lot of you are familiar with. And uh, they were great planning tools to look back on former years and plan for the future um, and see where we're going to be in the future. And uh, so we, we have been using those documents and I appreciate them. So when he was creating the budget last year, he really was faced with some huge challenges um, that COVID had created. And they, they were, were truly unknown challenges at that time. I don't think any of us thought that we would still be um, having shut, we still have shutdowns, restrictions, um, any of that. I, I, I know I didn't a year ago. I thought it was going to be a few months and my gym was going to open in two weeks and it didn't. Um, but um, I think all of us realized that the shutdowns had significant impacts. So David significantly lowered the pro projections of, for revenues um, for this year. And um, to date, his projections have been remarkably on target. Uh, when, I, when I asked him how he did it, you know, how did he even know? He'd never lived through anything like COVID. How did he know how to do those projections for where we were with our revenue? And what David did is he looked, he explained to me, he looked back at 2008 and what happened with that recession, what was the pattern with spending and what was the pattern with revenues? And that's how he made these targets. And so it, he remarkable, he did a remarkable job. Uh, but I do want to remind you when we do go over those revenues, I'm going to go over that for FY21. Just remember that it's not, they're not based on last year's or the year before. These are truly based on his lowered projections. Um, so I'm going to give you an update on that and in where we are with expenses and revenue. Linda's going to go over FY22 projections for um, year 22 as well. Um, so in the past six months, I have had the fortunate opportunity to watch an in-house finance team work really closely together. And I do want to thank um, Dan Zadat. I'm sorry, Dan, I do this every time, Zadonik our collector, Susan Golotsky, and our town treasurer, Linda Sanderson. They literally have met on a regular basis. Lately, it's been almost weekly, if not discussing things throughout the day, going up and down the stairs. Um, they literally dissected line item by line item, revenues, the budget where we are today. And I, am, I can tell you with 100% confidence that what you're going to see is accurate and has viability to it. Um, so I'm utilizing that history, um, these three expert individuals with the, their history and their knowledge, you are going to get a real realistic analysis of FY21, as well as where we're going for next year. But first, um, 
when I asked the select board to give me their priorities for the budget, they asked for a level funded budget and a level service budget. There was no cost of living or no increase increases associated with the salaries, especially those that have no contract. Um, so we're going to present the FY22 budget to you in a few weeks, but I have asked our, I've asked Deb Radway um, to present a really important analysis of where Hadley is in comparison to other towns in regards to um, what, what we're looking at for salary compensation. Um, and will be, it, it will be the beginning of a plan to address areas of inequity and ensure that the employees here in Hadley are where they should be for their working responsibilities they carry in their positions. This isn't gonna happen overnight, don't get alarmed, but I, I think I'm gonna continue throughout my time here that uh, that is going to be, it's a value of mine and I think it's a value of Hadley's and I just wanna constantly keep you updated on where we're at and where we should be looking to go because they truly are really your big, biggest investment. So first, Deborah, do you wanna, do you able to put those documents on or? Um, I don't, but, but everybody get them. I got them. Okay. They're pretty powerful. So sure. I can, whoop. Oh, Jennifer comes through. All right. I don't need them quite yet. Um, you're on. But, but you're, uh, I'm on? You're on. Okay. Time. So thank you. I know you've never met me and I'll be leaving you in two weeks. So you can hit the delete button at any point in time. Um, but I, I do have a couple of things I'd like to share with you. And uh, hopefully you'll indulge me for a few minutes here. So the biggest component of the annual town budget is labor costs. So it kind of seemed appropriate as we're diving into the budget season to frame up for you the personnel cost landscape, both across Massachusetts and in Hadley. Uh, then I want to spend a couple of minutes discussing in a little bit more detail what I see as an unhealthy pattern in Hadley, which is the growing disparity between what we pay unions and what we pay the town's largest employee group, the non-union population. Uh, first, let me just talk about the wage landscape across Massachusetts. The current year, fiscal 21, when the pandemic um, first hit, the average across the board wage increase in Massachusetts towns and in Hadley is 2%. Um, there's been some economic uncertainty to be sure, but very few towns across the strait actually had to lay off or furlough employees because they got smart and they repurposed staff to help with COVID and running Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Some towns and unions collectively negotiated one-year contracts for fiscal 21, the current year, instead of the traditional three-year contracts, because they really wanted to see where the dust settled after the pandemic before locking in long-term ob obligations. Uh, indeed, the Hadley School Committee just two weeks ago locked in a one-year contract for next fiscal year, fiscal 22, with their teachers union and with their paraprofessionals union at one and a half percent cost of living increase. So that's the first kind of already baked in increase for next fiscal year that's been settled. The pandemic this is me getting on my soapbox a little bit here, okay? The pandemic's a temporary situation we expect to recover from, and we should act that way as a community. The sky isn't falling. We have a hiccup in meals and local, re and local receipts and, me and hotel taxes, and maybe there'll be a hiccup for a year in local aid. But nationally, the cost of living increase for 2020 is 1.3%. Statewide, and particularly here in Western Massachusetts, towns are responding with wage increases of one and a half to 2% in fiscal 22. That's one of the slides. Oh, it doesn't work this way. Jennifer, can you put up the slide of the 
cost of living increases. <clears throat> nope. So, yeah, that one. Okay. In order to keep pace with, so drop it down a little bit. The first column is the current year, and the second column is uh, projected increases for 2022 uh, on the right. So in order to keep pace with inflation and a smidge better, the average projected increase in Massachusetts cities and towns for next year is 1.75%. She were to scroll all the way down, you'd come up with that. And there seems to be a continued increase in negotiating one-year contracts until cities and towns see a complete rebound in local aid and local receipts. I'm not aware of any community that's in the process of trying to negotiate a 0% increase or looking at layoffs in fiscal 22. Thanks, Jennifer. Hadley is a triple bond rated community with a stellar reputation for financial planning and stability. Linda, Dan, Susan, and David Nixon really worked, have worked so hard to get you there. And the finance committee has been an active participant in that achievement as well. That fact alone should make Hadley a really desirable place to work. And the town was so confident of its financial health, its ability to rebound, that at your fiscal 21 town meeting last May, you approved a budget that levied $500,000 under your taxing capacity. You did that publicly to protect the taxpayer with zero dollar tax increases during this time of un economic uncertainty. That may make it really difficult to all of a sudden plead a true depletion of resources for town employees. Doing so would also not signal confidence and financial health to the bonding agencies. Hadley needs to have a good financial plan ready to move forward when we get to the other side of this. And I think that means foremost, retaining and supporting your most valued asset, which is your town staff. So let's talk about Hadley town staff. Hadley has six binding collective bargaining agreements, union contracts, three by the school committee, teachers, support staff, and bus drivers and three by the select board with police, DPW, and dispatchers. All of those groups traditionally have had three-year contracts that included comprehensive salary charts with each chart having a list of classification of positions and each classification having a minimum and a maximum wage range with eight to 10 defined steps from the low to the high in each range. And each one of those steps has been, is three to, or three and a half percent between. So if you have a, a 10 step range and you have steps of 3%, you get 30% <coughs> salary differential between your starting range and your high range for each position. In all of these contracts, those step increases, the 3%, are automatically provided in each department's budget every year, and they are given to all the union employees. It's baked into their budgets. The contracts say that step increases have to be provided, so they get them mostly every July 1st. Any cost of living increase that you negotiate is on top of that, that that's negotiated is on top of those step increases. The fire department, council on aging, library, park and rec, and town hall employees are your biggest group of staff and they're not unionized. 
but they could be, and they are so in many Massachusetts communities. So not counting firefighters, there's about 44 regular non-union employees in Hadley. Many of them are Hadley residents and they're taxpayers and they average 10 years of service to the town. And unlike the unions, they, there is no adopted salary plan for non-union employees. All they get every year for salaries is whatever town meeting votes for that one and a half, two percent increase. Thus, every year the non-union staff fall three to three and a half percent behind the union staff in wage growth. In the past three years, at three and a, three or three and a half percent a year, that's ten percent wage lag behind the union staff. The result of that is creating a pay equity issue. Hadley non-union employee positions don't compete regionally. For example, the accountant left a couple of years ago for better pay and now you're paying an accounting firm more than you paid her for less result. The park and rec director who lives five minutes away in Northampton quit for a better paying job an hour away in Lenox. When a valued employee leaves, it takes a lot of time to rebuild. You got to recruit, you got to hire, you got to train, you got to settle in, you got to take responsibility and own your job. I believe this effort is better spent by training, keeping, and promoting from within with the people we have to provide better and continual service to the town. Nowhere, and Jennifer, you can put up the other sheet, is the pay inequity in Hadley more obvious than with the women who work for this town. I've taken... Scroll back up. I've taken off the names so you can't see. But if you look at this chart, the highlighted in yellow are the women. And this is all full-time and regular part-time employees. So it's including police, DPW, fire, town hall, park and rec, everybody. The women are predominantly at the beginning of the page, regardless of their tenure. Some of these people have been here since the 90s, and they're at the bottom of the page. This is not news to them. The good news is that the town has a plan to, thanks, Jennifer, you can take it down now. The good news is that, as Carolyn referred to earlier, there's a plan to address this now that we're aware of it. The select board are asking the treasurer, the HR director, and the payroll coordinator, that's Linda, Ed, and Joan, to develop a salary plan much like the unions have with ranges and steps. Um, and it's a plan that hopefully the select board can adopt and adhere to in the same manner in which they manage the union contracts. They're gonna use wage information from similar towns to ensure external equity, make sure you're competitive. And then they're gonna use their existing classification plan that Joan developed to ensure internal equity within town government. All the pieces exist, they just need to be put together by an experienced team of folks who know what the jobs in this town are. No more consultants trying to put things together for us. We can do it internally. So I guess I'm just asking that you consider treating the non-union staff at least as well as their union counterparts. I think it takes the whole team working together to move the community forward. And I just wanted to share that with you before I depart. Thank you.
Thank you. Dan. And it's been an honor working with all these folks. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. I, I have a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Let her rip. <laughs> Were you part of the uh, <clears throat> the union contracts negotiations that just went through? Were you part of that? No. Um, I didn't know about it until afterwards. The school committee? Just the schools. It was we're, just we're, the school? We're just beginning the other negotiations. Okay. Yeah, we just found out after it was voted. How is, I, I wonder how our contracts are in compared to contracts of a similar town size. Um, so our, our contract, our, our, I agree with what you're saying with the non-union. It's the, it's the, the, there's just so much I don't know about union, the union part, because everything is under um, the executive session. I'm not familiar with um, the ins and outs of the union contracts. Right? We're, not, we're not privy to that. So I don't know, in comparison, um, are, have we had good representation in the past? Are we... Are our unions getting paid more than other unions? Are we getting paid less? I just don't know how we're doing with the union part. I can only speak to the town side unions. I, I have no experience with or exposure to the school unions. Uh, the town unions, every three years, they have an opportunity to compare wages with other like communities, with the Grambys, the Belcher towns that, you know, Deerfield, and that ha gets to happen on a regular basis. So I'm going to say that um, we're, we're pretty average with them. We stay pretty competitive with them. I don't think that's the same with non-union. Okay. The unions do a lot of research, and so does the town folk on, you know, what the comparable community wages pay. And I know that the last contract, for example, the police union was brought up to be more comparable to their counterparts. I just wasn't sure. I know the unions have a very strong backing. Our town, we're limited on <laughs> funds. I just kind of wonder if we're getting on the town side the same representation and the same um, uh, feel that we're not being um, taking advantage of the town, not being taken advantage of because the unions are so strong. So I, I just don't know enough about the union contract itself. I just looking for your expertise on that. That's all. Um, so the, the town, I, I hear what you're saying. So you're going to be using the town study for, that we just did on the wages. Cause it seems like it was just last year or the year before that we just did a full study on all the wages in town. That information will be included with what Linda, um, Ed and Joan compile, certainly. Yeah. And, and Amy, my understanding is there's been at least five, if, if you know anybody else can correct me, at least five wage studies done in the past in the past that have never been followed, which that, that's a morale breaker right there. Um, you know, you, you want to be able to rely on that when, uh, when a town makes the decision to get that done and then it's not followed at all. That's why I really advocate for it being created internally versus hiring a consultant to do it for you. Because nobody knows our jobs better than our own people. Yeah. And it involves comparing it to... The, the interesting thing about Hadley is you can compare it... I'll, I'll use the town of Camden, who's got 5,000 people, but does not, have a, does not have any of the commercial that Hadley has. So if you think of a position like Dan or Susan, their responsibility is much bigger than a town of 5,000 because of the diversity of the commercial and the real estate that we have. Yeah, makes sense. 
All right. And I, uh, I was surprised. I am surprised to see the uh, other thing that you listed about the women versus because I, I really think it's more of it should be based not it should be based purely on the job and not on who has the job. Um, so and that's what you have in a union. Yeah. So that the, the women in the unions are paid the same as the men in the unions. But not a non-union necessarily. Yeah. It's, it's very uh, hard to believe that, that that's happening. You know, that, that they're, if, it, if it's the job. So I'm not saying where the pay needs to be. And I can't tell you what, um, I, w without having uh, the study in front of me, wh what job deserves a higher pay and what's, what range they're in versus another job because they're completely different jobs. But if they were two of the same job, I would think, I would really hope that we weren't paying um, one type of group over another. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. And the, but in the non-union side, there's no two jobs yeah. that are the same. Every They're all just onesies. Yeah. Of course. All right. I, I, uh, I guess I don't have any more questions uh, for Deb, unless anybody else wants to chime in. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to ask, is that sort of a standard practice in organizations to match the non-union position salaries to the union salaries? I'm not talking about matching them. I'm talking about just making sure they're paid equitably for what the, the position is supposed to do. It, and what you see in other towns, I'm sorry, David. I was that's okay. Talking. What you see in other towns, certainly towns I've worked in, where the non-unions would also have those steps included. So they're not getting paid this, you know, equivalent in a sense, because they're separate jobs, different with different jobs. But the plan of compensation remains the same as far as uh, a regular step increases and the COLA increases. That remains the same. That's what that's been my experience. I'll also say that Hadley non-union jobs probably all started out as little part-time jobs and they've kind of evolved and gotten more complex and taken more time over, you know, over the years. So it could be that, you know, someone took a part-time job while their kids were in school and then the job just got bigger and they stayed in their job and it, it just evolved. I mean, with that agrarian background that Hadley has second jobs were or, or were common and now these jobs are big and they're full time and the pay just hasn't caught up i do have a an, another thing i thought i could just mention so you know coming out of one of the things that um we did recognize what you're saying um for the last budget because um we knew we were going into a pandemic, but at the same time, it was very important for us. Nobody got laid off during it. Uh, we thought that was important. And we also did give an increase to all employees because what we wanted to have happen was we were looking to see if we could um, have it, uh, someone talk to the unions. We Last time, we wanted someone to talk to the unions. We wanted wanted it to be let's let's see what we can work on all together and and do this together and unfortunately there was no that did not happen and no one there was no communication or whatever happened there was there was nothing we could do as far as the finance committee that we thought we had um, control over about the union salary this was the contract and there was no negotiation about that so anyways we just felt as a group here that it was very unfair to to offer these increases to you know not to offer but these kind because we were stuck and we had to give these increases to the unions how unfair is that not to give it to the rest of the town staff because we recognize that too i completely agree that we don't we we need to recognize the staff and they shouldn't be punished just because they're a non union right we should all be in the same boat so I get that, um, but 
with that said, how about, um, you know, moving forward, there's almost like a new normal that people are talking about. Um, and we might need to rearrange maybe job descriptions or something like that because of a new normal. Maybe there is not necessarily layoffs, but maybe we do need to rearrange jobs. Um, I know that um, at least in my own personal time um, at my employer, that has happened. And um, we, have we have reduced um, because people are using new ways, electronic ways. They might not be using the bank as much and the retail as much. Um, and so we're not seeing people out as much and not, and even when we open our doors, we're not seeing it. And I get that we're gonna come back, but people are finding different ways to use um, the means. Um, we might not have as many people going into town hall down the road because people might've found different ways that they found it easier to make payments, whatever, or they might find that they figured out how to not use the library. I'm just saying we might, turn around and look and say, maybe we could do without this position because we're gonna rearrange some positions or maybe we could look at job descriptions or things like that. Now, I know that um, a lot of these um, offices and maybe we could just throw out something and just want your opinion on it, Deb, like um, some of the offices, the library has been closed. The senior center has been closed for a while, but they've reopened. And I know that there are different tasks that they're doing. Um, same with Park and Rec and same in Park and Rec limited their hours, right? They, they not do using as many. Um, we have schools, we have different departments. Is there, but yep, all these people are still working full time, even though they're not even open. Um, and, and we want it, didn't, but maybe down the road, we don't need to have as many people. Yeah, um, I mean, if you're looking at the, there aren't a lot of full-time employees at the library. I think Patrick may be the only full-time employee. They're part-times. And the Council on Aging has several part-time employees. Um, and the town hall has several part-time employees. But, I mean, your point is well made. The, the new normal will require the town to continually look at how it provides services. And, and, and that's got to be, you know, a regular function of Carolyn's. Which, which we've already done. We've, d we've done some changes with some administrative staff to support another department and um, because there was less responsibilities in another department. So we've done that. That's, that's definitely been looked at. I have found, Amy, though, that the difference between the private sector selling a product versus municipalities, regardless of a physical person coming into a building, all of the staff are still providing the same level of service because that has to, you have to take in, uh, the tax bills have to go out and they, they have to get processed. All of the, the treasurer has to do the, sound, the same amount of work. And even um, the Council on Aging, they're doing just as much work servicing those seniors that can't come in um, it's actually in many ways, it's harder to do this type of municipal service in a remote kind of way. It's not like I don't see the, the burden getting reduced or responsibilities, the, the increased dependency on technology and finding creative ways to serve the public without coming into the building. I find it almost more difficult. And I will tell you just in six months, what, I, what I've observed of Hadley employees I've never seen anything like it. And I've worked at four municipalities. This, this town, um, and I think a lot of it is because you do have Hadley residents as employees. They support each other and they go above and beyond supporting the residents. And I would say if we weren't sitting in COVID times right now, I would say you, there needs to be more support for some of these departments. So that I know we're not going to do, but, um, I, I, I can just tell you what I've observed in six months is not very typical on what you see in other municipalities. There is a true, true service-oriented mentality here for the residents. I'll echo that. Great. Now, I know um, when we, I, uh, I just sometimes also just think that uh, the employees that we have here, and, and, and I can, 
absolutely agree with what you're saying and what they do. And, and some jobs are much harder. Um, I do see some uh, where we could probably um, work together on some like uh, uh, jobs maybe and try to do a little bit of teamwork on some of them. I, I do see some of the one thing I do see is I, from year to year, we have grown quite a bit the last few years. I, I mean, we, we increased a, we did a big increase on our police department, a really big increase. We created a fire department. We've had a lot of big increases, big increases with, um, a lot of departments. So um, with that being said, you know, we're going to have to talk to the taxpayers and we're going to be talking about this, but I hear often, you know, this is little, and I completely agree with route nine and 50,000 people or however many it is during the day that makes a big difference. But um, people remember back when we didn't have this department, we didn't have this, why do we need all this? You know, it is, you know, tough to, we constantly have to explain that. Um, but it is growing and it's growing and it grows fast. Um, but then again, uh, we just have to sh show that we're doing um, the smartest, I guess, moves and the most, uh, you know, we're using all our technology here. Um, and we're, we don't have uh, frivolous costs. And I see that as my job to be able to articulate that to you and the taxpayers on what they're getting for their tax dollars. And, I, and I, I'm confident that I can show them what they're getting is getting a lot of value. Great. Right. So you're ready for the revenues and expenses for FY21? I think so. Okay, Linda, this is the fun part, right? I'll go first. Okay, um, so if you take a look at your, uh, the sheet that uh, says Town of Hadley General Funds year to date cumulative revenues and expenses for FY 2021. Um, and I'll just go over some of the notes at the bottom. Do we still have Jennifer's health? It's, it's this one. You guys all have it in front of you. Do you need me, do you need us to pull it up? Or I can try and share it. I don't know. I'm still here, but you can also, all of you have the ability to share. Okay. I'm, I'm a giver. Uh, so I, I already have it. Yep. Do you want me to put it up, Carolyn? Sure. Okay. If, if, would that be helpful for everybody? Yeah. Okay. My phone, it's hard to see. It's a little small. Ah, all right. <laughs> well, I'll, as they do that, I'll start. Um, so looking at the, the review of the revenues received year to date for FY21, the real estate and personnel property taxes are ahead of the target, our year to date target at 58.32%. FY21 totals are expected to come in at the projected target amount by the end of fiscal year. Is this showing? No. Not yet. The local receipts are lagging behind year to date target at 45%. A detailed review of pro projected versus actual seats was done to see if this should be of concern. As it turns out, there are significant amounts in local receipts that come in during the second half of the year. Most significantly, the motor vehicle excise, which is 700K, and PV Pioneer, Valley, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority of 202,000. Local receipts do show significant decreases in some areas that have so far been offset by increases in other areas. State aid receipts are close to target at 54.94% and totals are expected to come in at the projected target amount by the end of fiscal year. The areas of, def of continuing concern is that local receipts is most volatile as it is the revenue source most closely connected to the immediate local economy. Most impacted in FY21 have been the meals and the rooms tax. Rooms tax is coming in under original estimates Meals tax is coming in higher. Both should fully recover, but we don't know when. Departmental fees, these collections are doing fairly well, though FY21 totals may come in lower than the estimated 500,000. The ambulance rebate, this was estimated at 100K lower than FY20 receipts and came in 30,000 lower than that. And this will rise again, but not until FY22. We're still keep looking at that. Precautionary steps, 
I'm looking at the local receipt items rely on the economic health of our community continuing at current levels or better. As a, as a precaution, we've initiated monitoring. So we're carefully monitoring all of the sources of revenue and complete revenue review monthly. This is where um, this in-house team is looking at this at least monthly to see what's, you know, to see what is happening and what's projected to happen in the next month or two. Curbing spending. Uh, the last department head meeting, um, they were asked to curb any unnecessary spending within their budgets um, and to just keep an eye to track where they'll be at the end of the year. The important thing is that I have assured all of the department heads that if they do give back any money at the end of the year because they've curbed any unnecessary spending or um, just have some access, excess, they're not going to be penalized next year. And I just want to make sure that I say that. Um, I want them to have that confidence to know that the efforts they make to not spend will not be punished next year. So that we are optimistically cautious. Um, I think better each time we look at it, would you guys agree, Dan, Susan, and Linda, that um, each time we look at it, we feel better, even if we find some revenues that are lower. Um, like I said, they are really truly looking at each revenue source. And because they understand they've been here so long, they understand literally month to month when revenue comes in and when it doesn't or past history. I just really feel that I, I can, I wanna give you the confidence that these are really good analysis of where we're at. Yeah, what I would say is that what um, David would set this up and he knew when revenues came in and that was, uh, his was the chart we initially started using and he knows what revenues come in which month and he would, uh, so he had a good idea of what percentage we would be at each month. What we found in fiscal uh, in this year is that we're getting the revenues in certain areas, but they're just lagging. Uh, for example, our PVTA money, you'll see in, uh, on the point two there for local receipts, our PVTA money will come in. Last year, that came in in December. This year, we didn't even have the information on what it would be until January. It's been invoiced to five colleges. That's the amount we get back from them, and we should have it in soon. It will be here, but you can see how much 200000 would would um, throw off in our year-to-date revenues. So I have to say the first pass of this was a little nail-biting because it really did look at like, low, uh, like local receipts were coming in kind of low. And then when we, uh, we were able to go line by line, and that's why we got into the, the, the line by line and really looked at each of the revenues and say, what's, what's going on? What should we have gotten? Because you just see you have a big number there of the local receipts. And you'll see when we get to the other page how, and you've seen it before when uh, um, when we do the revenues, you know what goes into all the little items on um, on local receipts. And we'll say, what were we expecting? And what have we gotten so far? What the difference is? And oh, I see, I see. We're supposed to have had ambulance rebate in by now. Uh, it's coming, but it's not in by now. And uh, so we were able to do that kind of a, a look back and, and fix it up a bit and see that we were in, um, lot better shape the second or third round than we were when we put it together the first time. And so we're hoping, you know, each time we do this and we enter in the new month and we look at it, we have, um, we, we have a good, um, a good sense of it. We did, like I said, went down for fiscal 20, we backed into 20 and then did 21 to see, uh, to, to get a really good idea of what we might expect to come in or what really is a problem. So that's where we, that's where we saw that, well, rooms tax is lagging and, and that's going to come back, but there's nothing we can do about the quarters that have already passed. On the other hand, meals tax has picked up beyond what was projected and it almost offset it. Not, not quite. I think uh, rooms is down 100 and, 100 and meals was up 50. So we were only down 50 between the two of them from David's last projections. But um, that really told quite a picture about how we're living and how we're using our services in Hadley, that the, that the meals with the takeout and other ways of adapting around getting meals, that's, that's beginning to pick up. And hopefully we're going to see that in the rooms too. Um, so yeah, each, these are not just numbers. These all tell kind of a, story, a kind of story about what has happened to us, how we're coping with it, and, and where we hope to end up. 
um, when it's when we've recovered. Any questions, Amy? Was this helpful the way this was presented? Yeah, that's very helpful. Uh, we'll take some time afterwards and go through it a little bit now that you've explained it and look at it myself a little more detailed. It's, it's very helpful to get started with. Um, and I'm glad we weren't too far off with the projections. I'm glad David was yeah. so close. He's, he really, it's, it's remarkable. Yeah. So, um, that, so that's, that's, that's very, that's good. That's all great news that, that we weren't, we were thinking it was going to be worse. And now to see that there is, um, you know, with the vaccine and hopefully things were, uh, were going in the better direction. Now the, the numbers um, will start to get somewhat better. Have we seen any problems with maybe abatements or things like that, or foresee things like that happening with our commercial? That would be next year. Oh, okay. Next year. Okay. And is there any insight you want to give um, about that whole the whole process and where you where you see where things have changed significantly or anything like that? Yeah, I, I think the local receipts were pretty good. We're going to come in higher than what we estimated. A couple of these could be a little bit higher, but decided to keep them where they were in case motel comes in lower than expected. Mm -hmm. So we should be a little bit better off than what we had originally projected. And then there's a, a huge increase. And I know people don't want to hear this in the, the tax levy for next year. There's about 900,000 of ex estimated 900,000 over what we raised this year. We'll have available for fiscal 22. Thanks, Dan. Susan? I just wanted to chime in and, and thank Linda for, for pulling these all together in a really comprehensive, uh, much easier understood chart than what you folks used to have to look at in the past because it was horrible in the past. So you, you did a great job, Linda. Good. I, I hope we can have this working better month after month. And um, I think and, we're and all going to work on it. So right, right. And I think, yeah, getting it line by line is good. Um, here's the funny thing, though. We were uh, when we did the um, we decided to start from scratch with the FY21 <laughs> estimates. It's like, OK, 21, let's just start in what we think we're going to get between here and the end of the year. Oh, no, this is higher. Oh, this is a little lower, higher, lower, all the way down the sheet without really looking at the higher budgets. We come down to the bottom line. Aren't we within 10,000 of the total that David had? <laughs> I mean, it was it was ups and downs like, how, like, <laughs> how does he do that? But. Uh, but uh, I know I can't operate that way. I really, I, you know, we, I think that going over this, like with a fine tooth comb that we have and the, and the insights that the different people working on it, um, I, I really enjoy that we have these, these regular meetings and, and go over it. And it's good to have someone say, this doesn't add up. Um, it's like, oops. So I think that we have a really good check and balance system going and, and um, that we'll spot a problem earlier, perhaps than we might have. Um, which we haven't needed to, be, to do that in the past because in the end it all kind of worked out. But given the situation in, right, we're in right now, we need, we need to be watching it that closely. So we need to know, oops, we forgot to, this needs to get invoiced or we need to get on top of this and find out what happened. So get onto a department that maybe hasn't done their turnovers lately or something's lagging there and find out why. I mean, there's different reasons why local receipts, why receipts might be down in a particular department. Maybe the services are down or maybe they just are so overloaded they haven't gotten the money turned over. There's any number of things. And I think that's why we need to do it one by one ourselves internally and, um, and get that kind of a grasp on, on our whole situation. So we'll keep doing it. So are you ready for fiscal year 22 revenue estimates? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, can I, I, have, I have a quick question. Dan mentioned uh, nobody wants to hear that we're going to take in $90,000 more. 
is that do I am I I don't I'm kind of ignorant about this stuff. I'm sorry, but isn't that a good thing? Wouldn't that go a long way towards any salary inequities that we need to address? Or well, it, it's not ninety; it's nine hundred. Uh, nine hundred thousand. Yeah, which would translate into a sizable increase in the average single-family tax bill. Well, you still have to raise an appropriate. appropriate right. I was yes. talking from the eyes of the the taxpayer seeing their bill go up substantially next year. Because of the values rising or why? Uh, this year we, we reduced the tax levy by almost a half a million dollars. And then when we add in the two and a half percent plus the new growth for next year, it's gonna be slightly more than $900,000 more than we raised this year. And we can't do anything to uh, alleviate that, to, to take less? Uh, you, you can cut a million dollars out of the budget. That you pass I guess through. I'm not understanding. Are you saying that our budget is nine hundred thousand dollars too uh, higher, or that we're going to get more money? We're going to have nine hundred more, but we used for funding source. We use stabilization and free cash for this year. So we have to pay that back. The, I'm the sorry, that, I'm missing it. The money that we used from free cash and stabilization in this year's budget does not exist in next year's budget. So we can substitute that money with the tax levy and basically have a level funded budget. But if you want to reduce the taxes back to where they are now, you're going to need to cut about a million bucks. So I think the question is, in, um, I think we to, to make it a little bit more basic to help understand that, and that's not in a condescending way. I was on finance committee for years before I really figured it all out. Um, it, I don't know the best way to explain um, that what the, le the levy limit is, that it's not actual funding that we can use without an impact on the tax rate. So who would like to take that on to just try to make that as a basic explanation? Could you just define ta the tax levy? I thought that was the amount that we get from the taxpayers. Is it, is it more the amount we demand from the taxpayers? The tax levy is the amount that we collect from the taxpayers. The levy limit is the amount that we could collect. This year, we were $496,000 under the levy limit for what the tax levy was to keep a level funded tax bill. But this year also, we, in order to do that, we used a substantial amount of free cash and some stabilization at the fall town meeting, which unless we have a sizable free cash figure this year, and want to dip into stabilization again, we're not going to have those as revenue sources and you're going to have to come up with somewhere else for the money or make cuts. The 900 grand in tax money is one potential source of additional revenue that we weren't spending this year. Okay, thank you. And you know what I can do, um, Amy, if I could, if I, if there are some great explanations on the tax levy, the tax limit, and um, that I, if I can get that, I can send it to you, Amy, you can send it out because there's some good, good ones that can explain it visually. Like for me, I got to see it on paper. And um, I think if, if I can touch base and with Dan and the other group, we can put something together that will explain that a little bit better. It is kind of confusing. I go, I, one time I uh, did a YouTube and there was, um, and it and explained the difference between the levy, the levy limit, and where the money, a little bit about it. And it, and it is a little confusing, but um, sometimes some of those uh, videos were, they tried to bring it down to a level to, so that everybody could understand it. So uh, like, it helped me a little bit. Alexi, if you, if you think of it, you know, if you have any spare time, try to just put the, uh, the, mention uh, municipalities, uh, the tax levy, and, and, and you, there's uh, things on uh, YouTube. If I find Thanks. the one I looked at before, I'll send it to you too, because it oh. was kind of helpful. PLS has really good videos. That's helpful. Yeah. I can Thank look you. Well, I'll look for those links as well. Yeah. But have me try to explain it now after watching a video. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> That's why I was leaning on Dan. I, I agree. It's harder to explain it than... <laughs> Okay. Is that Linda, you want to Sure. If I could just have 30 seconds, I'm going to try 
Jennifer's been trying to tell me what to do. I'm going to try and get this on. I'm going to hit share screen. Well, there it is. And when she has success with that, I'm going to make Carolyn the host and I'm going to tell everybody good night. Can you see that? Thank you, Jennifer. Did it work? Yep. Yes, it did. Yes. <laughs> I see. I didn't do that second step that once you have it on the screen, then there's another button to hit share. So, okay. Um, well, right up top, you're going to see a bit about what, what Dan was talking about. Now, this is when we start each budget season, those of you who've been on a few years, the first thing that uh, we do is try and go over the revenues, where we stand, so what we've got to share. So we, we are putting in a, a few changes, and, um, uh, and, and that's what I want to go over with you to start with. Um, we have the same the same categories he's got, we've got uh, th this time, this table is going to be just the general fund. So when you do the general fund budget, this is the money that you've got to work with. The enterprise is gonna be handled separately and we don't have that information tonight, but this, this is the big one. Um, the categories are tax levy uh, at the top and we'll come back to it. The second is our state aid. Um, what's different in state aid is that you see all the positive numbers um, at the at the top of, um, of that section, starting with 1,294,000. Uh, those are all of the receipts um, that the state gives us. And then the line always was the state give us and they state, state taketh okay. away on the second page, but the second page expenses he would put in another part of the budget. To work with what we've actually, to see more concretely what we've actually got to work with as general funds and doing the revenue, we're now gonna put the, uh, the offsets and the charges right up against what the state is giving us. Now, and this is directly from the cherry sheet that we got in January last month. And you know, there's gonna be at least two more before we're done with this uh, process. And so as each one is changed, each one comes through, this section may change. But to start with right now, you see we've got 900,710, a little bit lower than last year, but last year's it rose as the year went along. So do not give up hope. Um, again, we'll come back to this local receipts as the third section and the fourth section are the enterprise receipts as in what the general fund receives from the, um, from the enterprise funds to cover town overhead. And then we've got a number at the bottom. So um, we will, that 17,511 at the bottom will be um, what we have raised in general fund revenues to put, apply to that budget. That's not counting other sources that you saw on the prior tab See if I can do that. Oh, I can go over there. You saw, you see in the middle section of this tab, total funding sources for the FY21 budget there in the middle square. We have these amounts that I've referred to on that page, what we've raised, including the enterprise fund chargebacks was 16.5 for, for 21. And then we use stabilization, free cash and other sources to get it up over 17 million. So for starters, boom, we're back at, um, for starters, we've got the 17.5 before using any additional sources. And that obviously is not where we wanna start, but know that we do have some, we have some funds there that we can tap into. So maybe since we were just talking about, and there were questions, um, Dan, you would, if, um, if you wanna dem, if you wanna say where the taxes come from and show the difference between what we projected for 21 and what we're using. This is the 900,000. You see 901,653 is the difference between 21 and 22. That's the 900,000 he was talking about. We raised 12,608 12, last year and 13,509 million is scheduled to be raised this year. And that's what was agreed at town meeting that they would take the, they would take the no increase for 21 budget on the understanding that it was all going to come back. We're gonna get back to where we were for the fiscal 21 budget. And uh, so the choice was go up halfway and then go up the rest of the way for 22 or give, your, give yourselves a break here in 21 and then we'll get back to where we were in, in 22. So I don't see it so much as a $900,000 jump as to there was a $500,000 grant in 21 to taxpayers and we're now back to where we were. And th this isn't what we're saying, this is what the town agreed to. And this was the select board's position at the town meeting when we voted on the budget for 421. 
Is there anything more you want to say on the, uh, that's on a the good explanation, Linda, that, that, that sounds, that's how I remember it, but I like the way you explained it. Is, is there anything more on that, Dan, that um, needs to be, should be highlighted? Yeah, in a, in a normal year or prior year, the the fiscal 21 tax levy would have been 13-1. Yeah. And then if you scroll down to the local receipts total, that would have been a half, if we had the same budget, that would have been a half million dollars less. So it would have been 2.12. And we would have ended up taking in about 500 in free cash from page three. Right. Plus what we're going to actually get from page three for this year. Yeah. Okay. So that's part one, our taxes. Uh, part two, I think I went, I did take some time and go through the state aid. And I would love a little feedback. Does that make sense to finance committee? I mean, we, it, it, it played well with us and, and, um, uh, we can always go to the bottom and see how much we've got in general funds to work with. Do you like this way of doing it that we do the offsets right in there and we come out with a, a net amount of state aid right in, in this initial revenues form? Does that work for you guys? I don't see why you would do it any other way. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I mean, it's an, we need to know what the net is. Okay. I, all about the net. I don't like flipping around to different pages. I right. like it all on one. I think it's perfect. Thank you. Right. Yep. All right. Okay. We will stick with that. Do you want the itemization there or do you want to just say, here's our receipts and here's the charges? Do you, you want to see like from year to year what the chapter 70 yeah. was in the charter? You do want that. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Done. Um, I can see, uh, probably have to go back and, and fill in on those. Oh, uh, you know, the reason I took it out in earlier years um, because it's always in the budget the way it is this year. And then we collect our taxes. And this is what our collections were the 12s uh, in 19 uh, and 20. You can see we collected 12166. We collected 12624. That's our actual collections. And it's not necessarily, this is how much we did on the tax levy line. This is how much for Prop 2.5. So our collections kind of uh, blur those lines. And so we don't, you don't see that in the past so much, but I will try and go back for next time. I'm going to go back and fill that in for 21. So you can see where we got to the 12, six. Okay. Um, so down in local receipts. Um, so this, this is interesting too, uh, a little bit of, of just a little bit of housekeeping here and how this was done. In order for us to do this drill down on local receipts, we worked hard uh, to line up what the revenue, the VADAR account numbers you see on the left column. Let me go to the, there's the headings. VADAR account numbers, so you can know where, so I know what I'm doing, when I, we're assembling it at the close of each month, where did that come from or what was our prior year? And then the second column is where it also appears on the tax, on the tax recap line, what section of the, of the or the second area for, for state aid, you see this cherry sheet, which section, where is this actually coming from? Okay, because that's, again, I'm very concrete when it comes to the numbers I wanna know, where is this? How does it line up? Does it balance? Where where are we going? Where are we where are we going? Where have we come from? So um, I won't necessarily show that to you every time unless you're kind of uh, interested in what that is. But I, I wanted to show it to you the first night so you can uh, maybe get some confidence that these are that we know where these are coming from. We're using actual uh, reports and figures and and making sure that they balance how how they compare to the projections for each year. And how we're doing. So, okay. So then down on local receipts um, are different categories that we go through the motor vehicle, the meals excise. Um, let me make that. Oh, does that help make a little bigger? Maybe. Oh, um, oh there. Well, that helps me anyhow. The motor vehicle, the meals excise, rooms excise, cannabis excise. Those two A, B, and C, those three are what we get quarterly from the state. Quarterly as in the end of November, September, the end of December, the end of March, which is our next time. So when you're seeing year to dates um, for those three, these 
these, <laughs> these three. Um, that's what we have received so far. Um, so that's two quarters. So that's how we could see uh, 254,000 for meals. Uh, I guess I didn't break it down that way. We have the, the details on um, what we receive within each of those categories. I thought I was gonna include that, I'm sorry. It'll get better each time, I promise. Um, so we know where we stand and that's how we ended up revising our revenues because when we look halfway through the year and we see where we are in relation to what we projected, we then did a revised revenue amount. Okay, so um, then going into FY22, which is the blue, we used where we thought we would be uh, the revised, the revenues for uh, 21, which is the green, and we jumped over to see where we were. So motor vehicle, Susan said, yeah, we're about the same, maybe a little bit more, that's to 805. We did the, those three excise one, meals, rooms, and cannabis, based on what we've been collecting this year and where we're going to be. And you'll see a new one has popped up here. We are definitely, we are starting to receive money from the state on cannabis and we are hoping that's a figure that is um, going to uh, going to grow. I don't know, Susan or Dan, you want to say more on that? You followed that more closely than I did. Most communities are taking in sizable amounts of money that have pot shops. Yeah. I don't know. We've taken in, I think it's seventy four hundred or seventy five hundred so far. Yeah, but, which mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know what period that covers. It could be. Right. A week. Could be two weeks, could be a month. Yeah, it cut sure well. It's those, not three months. Yeah, yeah. It, it covered a three month period, but we don't know where within that period it, it started kicking in. So we don't know whether to take that 75 and triple it for the next one and then double that again. So we're going to have a much better idea at the end of March, not only where we stand in 21, or but what we can expect in 22. And we're hoping that 30,000 is something we can increase. Penalties and interest, uh, that's uh, something. Linda, can I just can I just chime in? Of course. Uh, the other thing that we talked about in our last meeting is that these 22 budget numbers, uh, DOR is going to make us justify them. It, it can't be a shot in the right. dark. Uh, it has to be justified that, well, wait a minute. Um, we think the pot shop was open for three weeks or four weeks. So we are extrapolating out these numbers to get where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if, yeah, and if we know they're going to be, yeah, they're not gonna like a, a jump from zero to, to 30. We're gonna say where you get that from your more than last year. And um, yeah, if we can substantiate it, that's fine. And if we can't substantiate it, but we still have it, we still have it parked in the back of our heads. We know that's going to be a higher number, so we might be a little more uh, liberal in with our budget, knowing we're going to get some money in. But I don't know. Linda, with Hadley opening up, won't that be additional revenue? Yeah, I don't know when you see that. When we would see the revenue from Hadley? Um, yeah, I mean, we we don't. This particular one, as opposed to the impact fee down below, is the one that we that has to filter through the state first and it comes back, just like the rooms and the meals. So we're um, I don't know how to have better information on it than to wait for that payment to come in. There might be a way. There might be a way to actually swim upstream a little bit and find out how we're doing, but um but that this is the best I have right now. But well, we will definitely have better information at the end of March and see what we can do. All right, penalties and interest is out of the collector's, uh, uh, I think those, those are yours, right, Susan? Pilot? Uh, yeah. Some of mine and some of your tax title. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's interest that we collect, not that we pay. Uh, pay uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, those are three three particular sources we gather that from Hadley Housing Authority, Fish and Wildlife, and help help. One other. Dan Hadley Housing Authority. Town Fish of Amherst. Wildlife. Town of Amherst. Okay, so we're estimating about twenty for that. Then, um, then we have the departmental fees, which is this whole next stretch, which is everything that departments collect. 
um, st starting with uh, there's well we have the sub start with supplemental taxes tax liens redeemed uh, that's what um, that's what I collect um, boat excise three thousand that's close to what it has been uh, select board receipts maybe down a little bit maybe not but we're this first round we're trying to be conservative uh, assessor treasurer receipts just just like little stuff that we collect we're just this is everything uh, collector's receipts uh, those are more like the fees that she col that uh, they collect um, that's up going to be up a little bit because this year's already up pretty high for being uh, well that's not the yeah it's pretty close to that isn't it? Susan like 33,000 already yeah. so we think that's going to come in much that'll higher be fine. So, yeah. that'll be so a good number we jumped on that one, clerk receipts, planning board, ZBA. We don't know, it depends on filings. Those are filing fees. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, police receipts are um, are the administrative fees we get for the uh, private duty mostly. There is some towing fees in there, which was a new, a new source of uh, revenue implemented about a year ago. Um, uh, fire receipts is mostly uh, inspections, but it's also burning fees and various other fees that they collect. Um, uh, building inspector, we're going to group those together now, building, plumbing, gas, and electrical. Um, those fees were increased this past year. So when we increase it to 175, that's a combination of both having higher fees being charged and building is something that is just Ooh. happening. There's a, there's a lot of working on houses, I guess people are home while they're home, stuck at home. They're working on their houses, so that's that's good. And uh, may I ask you, since you're right here, uh, why are fire receipts down? Why why did you predict 15 on the fire receipts? Um, I'm trying to think what that number was on. Uh, what? They, they, Linda, didn't we say we were going to talk to Mike on that? Yes, we're, we are going to talk on it. They're, they're down, not based on what was projected last year, but, but what's been collected year to date, which is, again, I'm sorry, it's a figure. I, I didn't put in each line by line. I actually think thought maybe we didn't want to analyze it, and here I am doing it. So um, that's not the way I planned to do it. But we were going to talk with him about, uh, because I think uh, less has been- have an administrative person for, so, yeah. for a period of time. So the collections were down. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so far it is. And then I know that there, um, isn't that the one that the inspector uh, building is, Tommy said yesterday that they're going to start billing some of that through their new online program. And I think so. And yeah, uh, uh, I'm going to work with them to get board of health in a different layer on that as well, so that we have a handle on what the receivables are. So we do think it's going to come in higher, Amy, but when we were doing 22, we were using what had been collected so far this year in 21, whether we knew the, and in some of these cases, we don't know full, the full reason, and we just didn't want to overestimate. Okay. Um, he wasn't able to do some inspections just because the closures and things like that. So I think he is doing catch up. Right, right. I think that there was a, or there was a delay in inspections really all around of getting in weights and measures. I mean, the one that we contract Northampton, there was a full six to nine month delay in the inspector's bit getting around. So this might be one of the other ones, one of the ones where it's not going to be a, a decrease so much as a lag. So we're going to, that is one that we're going to, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on all of them, but that's, that's what we'll do there. Let's see. Uh, yep. Smaller ones, school receipts, cemetery, uh, board of health. Um, I don't have a big handle on that one either. Again, didn't we base that on year to date, Susan and them? And, and, and then thought we, we really have to look into that some more and see yeah, where that and money, why did, why was it projected at 80 for last year? And we're not anywhere near that. So we just, and I've got a call into um, the software company, to because I think the the point was they were going to do the same thing that the building inspector did, add ten dollars to the fee, and that was going to pay the software company. But uh, Scott emailed me like at ten minutes to seven tonight and said, "Sorry, I missed you. I'll call you first thing in the morning." Okay. So we'll have a better idea on that. Yeah, yeah. And is that the one where they lowered the fees this year? Um. 
I no, I think only the select okay. board lowered the fees. Okay. All right. Okay. So well, hopefully that's another area we're going to see it's going to hire, but we had, we, we felt we had to keep the projection down when our year to date's 21 were low. So that was sort of our policy in going through this. Um, and, uh, and we know you'd much rather know that you've got some more money coming in next time we report to you than, than, uh, than just to have it taken away. That's how we we're, we're trying to approach it that we each move forward. That's a very solid step. We um, felt it was we felt it was smarter to be conservative until we absolutely had a yeah. you know had a a handle on whether or not it was coming. Cannabis a cannabis impact fee again it's different than uh, what we get back in taxes. Uh, that's a payment to the town under the community ho host agreements. Um, we have two in place so far, which uh, Dan reviewed in the last couple of days sort of to help us come up with a, uh, where our estimate is for next year, because once they get rolling, we have, we have good payments from them each year and there's a formula, they're in the contract. So we know what we should be getting from them. So they both really just, well, one's online right now. The second one should be coming online soon-ish. And, and then that will be another source of income from us. PVTA is an assessment based on, um, actually, this is, the, this is the portion of the PVTA assessment that uh, five colleges pays back to the town of Hadley. Um, and we get that information each year so we can bill it back. And again, that one came in late this year and we didn't know how much it was, which is why our revenues year to dates were thrown off. Investment earnings, I, that's a hard one because we've had extra money on deposit with the uh, with the bonds and the financing, which we have now spent down. Uh, so this isn't just about not knowing what the earnings are. Uh, this is about not knowing, you know, I don't know. Amy, you can guess at that as well as I can. So. I think that they're gonna stay those, uh, those interest, uh, the interest in the earnings is gonna stay down. So. Okay. So we, we just kept it with 16 last year without maybe the safest thing to do is keep 16. That's a good idea. I just, <laughs> on the, um, back, just quickly back to the PVTA, that's the bus, correct? Yes. Um, so do you think we're going to have issues when Route 9 is, um, are they going to, is that going to affect the bus whatsoever with the, pro, the Route 9 project? I think everything's going to be impacted by Route 9, but they're still going to have to transport people. So okay. um It'll be frustrating, but I don't think it's going to impact the level of transportation under the circumstances of where we are now with COVID. I know that was a discussion that David had with PVTA probably eight months ago. They, yeah, they still have to get back and forth, don't they? Mm -hmm. um, Thanks. Okay, that, but that, that's a good point, Amy, and we'll uh, certainly uh, something to keep in mind, to keep pursuing that one too. Um, uh, local fines, uh, that's our share of fines that come back from uh, the, the local district courts and the state courts. Um, that's been pretty steady, so I just kept it steady. Oh, I already did that one. I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth now. Uh, Medicaid is collected on behalf of the school. UMass is that's a contract where they pay us sixty thousand dollars a year. Uh, we used to call it pilot, but I guess technically it's not pilot. I guess it's a contract that we have with them. Yeah, based, based like a. It's just every year we get sixty thousand. Right. It's a it's a thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Hadley to Solar, we get uh, the the fees or the credit credits back. Um, ambulance rebate, uh, that one we you see going back to twenty. Uh, we completely that was a we had a contract with the ambulance service for two hundred sixty seven thousand five hundred dollars in in um, FY twenty. We got that money back completely in the rebates. Uh, this is complete. This is due to usage. Uh, David projected usage down and took a hundred, a hundred thousand off what was anticipated. And truth, we got 30,000 less than that. This, this for fiscal 21 we've received, because since it's based on fiscal 20 services, we only got 138,000 back this year. Um, usage is down. 
in one sense, you could say that's a good thing. But um, but we do anticipate and the service is ready and we're ready to uh, service the students and other and other traffic when it picks up and shoppers when they get back out on the road. And when we all get back to back to normal and traffic picks up, um, we do anticipate that um, that will go up. But we're going to keep it down for now because what we're going to receive in 22 is based on F FY21 services and it's been sluggish. It's been at the same pace all year, although I think it is picking up lately. I mean, I'm just going by the, um, the sounds on Route 9. Sale of surplus cotton. Just a quick thing on the ambulance. That could even be, so yes, we did get the 267. If it was the same year as the year that we got the 267, um, and where we got it all back, um, we, and say we had the same year um, and possibly get it all back again. It will even be higher than that because the bill is higher, <laughs> right? Well, we, we won't, we don't get back any more than the, than the amount of the contract that we pay to them. Right. But it isn't increasing every year by, by a decent amount. It's not the same. It's not going to be 267, isn't it? And then, and then, um, I, don't have the amount for what it is this year, but you're probably right. There is, it is something that's going to increase and that you're right. Okay. Now I get you. Yes. Yeah, so as the contract grows, if, if the services are uh, justify it, then we would get all that money back, which could be more money. Yeah. Um, sale of surplus po property. This is when they sell off the old cruisers, trucks and various things. And I, and they are really, they, they're pretty good about, getting things off the lots now and uh, getting some money in, win-win. We get those titles out of here, get them off the insurance rolls. Prior year refund, that's just when we get money in late. It just happens. So it's not something we really predict or can control. Miscellaneous, I don't know, miscellaneous is miscellaneous. One year it was high, but that was actually, uh, Dan found that, uh, or, and, and, I, and once he mentioned it, I recalled it, that uh, that year we uh, were a late, um, there was a late payment from UMass for the prior year. So it went into miscellaneous rather than up in UMass. They paid us 55 and then they also paid us 60 in the same year. So that's why that miscellaneous is so high, but generally is more a reasonable miscellaneous amount. So local receipts, 2,634,000. We're predicting it to be a, a bit higher than was projected to FY21. If we're lucky, it will be uh, we have places where we're hoping maybe it's up to 100,000 more than that. Um, we'll have to see. And like I said, we will know more at the end of March. And in some ways, we know really with each, with each passing month, we have a better idea of seeing how we're coming out of this dip that we have been in. And the other is the last category uh, for enterprise receipts. These are the amounts that we do receive back from uh, our three, the water sewer and Hadley media for the overhead in town hall uh, for, for servicing their departments and billing and uh, pay, payroll and benefits, retirement, everything related to their employees. There are formulas that was revised last year and hopefully it's just a matter of, of doing the, the formula each year. And this is what David uh, came up with before he left very kindly and there we are, folks. We have a we have a budget that is hopefully a million higher. I mean, a uh, revenue source in the general fund, which is hopefully a million dollars higher than last year. Um, even in a, a level funded budget, you have to remember we put a lot of free cash stabilization and other money sources going back to here. Mm -hmm. We put. $1.2 million into the, uh, in addition to the revenues to cover last year's budget. So even if you say level funded, mm, we've already used it. Uh, and uh, so I'm hoping, we're hoping our revenues will be higher. We're hoping that the cherry sheet will improve. Um, it usually does over time and um, that we'll, we'll get there. So we have not, we just really started to pull the budget together now and get it compiled in a form that hopefully can be, I can't remember Carolyn when our presentation goal date is somewhere mid March. March. Yeah. Which, which is next week, but that's, but we're not that early, <laughs> but so that's what we've been doing on revenues. That's what we, uh, do you have any questions, any other questions on it? 
Thank you for going over each line item and explaining where you where you got these numbers from. It was very helpful. Good. Um, we haven't uh, we didn't have them ready for le select board meeting last week, but I did send these out to them today. And um, if going over it in that way is something that they're interested in, then we'll we'll do it again. So. Or they can watch us online. If they or they we've got it all set. <laughs> we got Jane, right? Isn't Jane on? She was. <laughs> okay. So Amy, this really, I, I, we felt that this presentation was the best way to tell you where we are today, where we think we're going to be till the end of June, and then the work that has been done to look at the revenue. Um, so kind of like a springboard to be able to, as we move forward in the next couple of weeks, to get all of the department budget requests in, um, and to let you guys know that, um, Linda and I did meet with the larger budgets, uh, the larger departments such as police, fire, and DPW um, together. And then I met separately with the smaller departments and was able to clarify level service versus um, level funded because that, that was confusing. Um, and um, so that we were able to just make sure everybody was on the same playing field and understood exactly what the guidelines were. So. Our goal now is to plug in, in those two different scenarios, what the expenses are going to be, what the revenues are going to be, as well as we will have different scenarios for cost of living increase uh, as a totally separate uh, number um, to, be, to, to present to you and to the select board. Okay. It's a big puzzle, and it's it's not an easy one this year. Yeah, but weirdly, Linda loves this. <laughs> I, do. I do. I feel bad for you. What a year to start with, uh, for Carolyn to start with us, though, right? <laughs> oh, it's great. It's been, it really has been a really good experience, and um, probably the best financial planning I've ever been a part of. Um, it's been just, you've just got three great people who understand Hadley and history and what they do so well as it with their professional requires. So I, I'm just telling you, I have a lot of confidence on the information that you've gotten tonight. It was really accurate. I do too. Great. Well, I don't have any questions about what you've shown us. Um, does anyone else? I'm fine. None for me. I, I would like to note that no cats were harmed during this meeting. Um, <laughs> Um, Paul, I'll Paul, I have a favor. If you can stay on afterwards, I have a, a couple questions to ask you. Sure. Not, not about finance. Okay. <laughs> so um, I guess I know that you wanted to do the, um, you have a transfer. Maybe we can look at that next, at our next meeting, uh, unless you need it right away. Um, just because I know that, uh, now it's been almost an hour and a half. I know people want to get to start eating and stuff, so I don't want to hold up everybody. <laughs> um, is that is that a, is that something you need right away, Carolyn? I I don't think so, right? We can do that fun that transfer and talk about it later. Is that the HR one? Yeah. I Linda, we're okay to wait, aren't we on that? The HR transfer for uh, the the it was underfunded. Oh, because we have, well, right, the, the, the personnel um, change that happened, right. I actually can't remember the specifics of it, Carolyn. I, do you need that tonight? Do you need that reserve transfer to be settled tonight? I thought Carolyn put that in. I mean, um, Deb. Deb did. Yeah, I think she did. But well, we'll, how about we talk about it tomorrow and we'll uh, okay, we'll have it. No, no, I, I don't need it. Um, I don't think... Well, certainly not in, in uh, Feb by end of February. The budget's not in the negative. It's just anticipated not to yes. be able to make it that's, to the end of the year. That's what I'm thinking. So I think so, okay. so, so, so sometimes what finance committee decides is we'll just, we're just going to set that aside for now and see what happens. But um, but I think when you've got someone on payroll, we can. it's a pretty good bet that um, we're not going to make it. It's not a matter of like having a large expense and, and making your other expenses meet. So, um, yeah, I think you'll be meeting – more often <laughs> this is tis the season i know so if we could now talk about then maybe uh so 
we're looking at a uh, tri board meeting um, on the 17th. I'm thinking, is it March 17th? I think that's when we were talking about it, which would have been that's the date, um, Linda. March 17th, I think, is when we're going to do the the budget. Okay, we'll be ready. It's coming fast. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. I think I had it as the third, but I think we're not going to be ready until the 17th. St. Patrick's Day. Okay. Huh? So then uh, maybe we could, uh, so finance, we could talk about um, setting the, so if we meet on March 17th, um, that's when you present the budget to, uh, you know, you're presenting everything, you know, the expenses to us if we could set a, a meeting, what would be good for everyone for just the finance to meet right after that at some point? Um, uh, after the 17th? Yeah, are Wednesdays good? Like, like um, so if we yep. do the week after? 24th. Yeah. Yeah, Wednesdays work for me. Yeah, would that work for you, Carolyn? Yep. And we'll stay with the five, five thirty start times. Yeah. So, um, and there's nothing. Select board is not doing that, right? Not on twenty fourth. No, that's the off week. Okay. And and so then, okay. So that will be March twenty fourth. And then on March twenty fourth, what we could do at that point is set up meetings uh, for all the Perfect. departments, and we can discuss it at that time. <clears throat> figure out. Um, Carolyn, maybe you could come up with some suggestions on uh, what would what you think would work for the departments and for us, um, but we can make meetings. Um, to Let me ask, Amy, what do you typically do? Do you meet with each department? Do you set aside like time slots, have three or three come on one night and do time slots? Yes. Well, how do you typically do it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then it depends on how big it is, right? So, you know, if it's, the planning board can be paired up with someone else who is, and we usually tried to do it um, in uh, like the 100 group versus the 200 group versus, you know. Okay. And so I think some departments make more sense being together. And I, and I know police and fire is large, but it might make more sense to do that in, with the dispatchers as well. Yeah, they, they used to, you know, we did a, I think last year, maybe we talked to them separately because they had a conflict, but typically we would do police and fire and dispatch all together. Uh, so that would make sense to me. But if a department has a reason that they say they don't have anything, like they agree with everything that you have, they have nothing to add. It's not like they have to come and talk to us or I don't believe that it's, it's, it's a mandatory thing, right? So it's more for the department to come and put in um what their needs are so i don't want to make it so that it's that they have to i think it may be good amy to have the, the department every department so they can tell you how they have been servicing the public during covid it might help everybody have an idea of what still is taking place within a department even though the buildings are closed yeah i mean I, that's what i would like to encourage the department heads to do yeah i would encourage i mean Last, I guess last year, the only one that didn't actually what that I thought that might not come because they weren't going to have a big change, or at least I didn't think they were going to have a big change. And I said that they didn't need to was Hadley Media, but then they ended up needing to because actually they did have a big change. <laughs> okay. So we did end up meeting with everyone pretty much last year. I, mean, I was just mentioning it in case someone didn't want to. Okay. I know what those long nights are like with budget planning. So I don't have anything else um, unless you have anything else to add. I don't. Thank you very much. Okay. Need a motion to adjourn? Yes, please. Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks.